I know the game just came out, but let's talk about the ending for Call of Duty Black Ops 6. And I guess let's talk about it, trying to explain what happened. So by the end of the game, and obviously expect spoilers, but by the end of the game, we find out that Jane Harrow was part of Pantheon. She was the mole. She was infiltrating the CIA. But we also find out that the web goes way deeper than Jane Harrow. We find out by the end of the game that Troy Marshall, Woods, Russell Adler, and his team, all the, their, and, and their team that they have, are going to be sent back to Avalon to continue to investigate the Pantheon problem. Livingston, the director of the CIA, tells them that there is still a big threat to the United States and there's a big threat to the CIA and that they someone's out there, so they're going to continue to work and continue to figure that out. They get reinstated by the CIA, basically, but they remain like in the dark. They remain like shadow ops. Like Nobody's going to know about them. Nobody's going to know that they're alive. Nobody's going to know any of that. And they're going to be working completely off the books, off the grid, but Livingston is going to give them every single thing that they want. Now, the biggest, most juicy, and most best part of this ending, and most confusing, I suppose, is that we see a man at the end of the game. As Livingston says that they are still in the CIA, it cuts to the office of the CIA director, Daniel Livingston, and we see somebody logging into his computer, accessing all sort of secrets that nobody, nobody should know besides him, and it hands up to this guy and he's just smiling as he's logging in and at first you wonder who the hell is he who, who, who is this guy because i was a little bit confused i thought there was gonna be a little bit more than that i honestly thought it might have even been alex mason or something i don't know just brainwashed I, I thought something crazy like that but when it panned to the guy i had no clue who that was i said okay that's a random looking man i kind of got a strong chin on him but other than that i don't know who he is and i thought you know i guess maybe he looks kind of familiar with the little coat and everything and i went back to the first mission the very first mission of the game where livingston troy marshall woods and jane harrow are giving livingston a debrief of what happened in Q8. There's a typewriter behind Daniel Livingston and he's just typing everything that's going on, like kind of recording everything and, and, and whatnot. Very just in, in the dark, in the shadows. And then when the debrief is basically done, Jane tells Marshall, meet me in my office. And the camera cuts for like a second or two to the recorder. And he just looks dead on. Like he's like staring dead ass at uh, Marshall and, and, and Jane. And if you grab that picture and you grab the man at the ending of the game and you put them side by side, is the exact same guy. You could tell the strong freaking facial features. You can tell because of the sweater that he's wearing. You can tell because of the uh, five o'clock shadow that he has. It's literally the same guy. And so it's basically telling us that the CIA has been infiltrated. The problem, Pantheon is inside of the CIA. They are much bigger than Jane Harrow. Somebody is controlling them. I also think in one of the sequences uh, where Jane Harrow is in the CIA building and she's fighting against her evil self, there's a man always standing to the left of her. And he's wearing like a vest and some black pants. And it kind of looks like that guy. Like, I didn't pay too much attention to him, but if you go back and look, it looks almost exactly like that guy as well. So there were hints of him being in the CIA, of him being around from the very, very beginning. And I don't know who he is. We don't, we don't have a name for him. We don't have anything at all on him. We just know that he is maybe the head of Pantheon. He might be the main guy in Pantheon. And I just thought that it was cool to have him, you know, show up before, but us not knowing who he is or what his name is or any of that stuff. I mean, that is valuable information that I really, really wish we had, but that's what we have on him right now. So what I think is going to happen now, because we're, because we're, the game ends on a cliffhanger and it kind of just ended. And, and again, I, I don't like that because I thought, I wish we would have gone a little further. I wish we would have found out a little bit more. I personally don't like the idea too much that we don't finish the campaign story in the campaign. And we have to wait for Warzone and play Warzone to understand what happens next. I really, really like the way that Treyarch does incorporate Warzone into the story, though, if you compare it to uh, what Modern Warfare did. Cold War was really great with the Victor Stitch Kuzman uh, and adding lore to that. And just it was really accurate and really cool. But it sucks that we have to wait for that to see what happens with Pantheon, to see what happens with these other people. I, I, I you know, I just think it would have been cool if we would have gotten a definitive ending. Like we would have known, OK, yeah, that guy definitely is Pantheon. This is his name and this is what they're up to next, because it basically sets up. I guess it doesn't set up a sequel because if we're going to see what happens in Warzone. Then, you know, it sets up the continuation for the story in Warzone. But, you know, at the end of the game, 
game, we have the team reassigned to Avalon and they're working Black Ops missions like completely in the dark. Daniel Livingston is on their side of the good guy. The CIA is still very much infiltrated by Pantheon and it is right under Daniel Livingston's nose. It is his typewriter or his recorder, somebody that he doesn't even think he doesn't even take a second look at is the guy who is behind Pantheon. And that's where the game ends. The game ends with a dark tone and still so many things left unsolved. And to hit this point home, the story of Black Ops 6 will most definitely continue in Warzone uh, for the next few months until the release of the next Call of Duty, as you guys know. We are going to see what the team is doing in Avalon. We're probably going to see what happens with Adler next. We are probably going to see who Case 1 is is we're probably going to see his backstory and why he was experimented on we will also probably see a conclusion to pantheon we will probably see who that guy at the end of the game was and we're going to get more backstory on him specifically throughout the war zone stories again i am basing that off of what we saw in cold war i do believe that the pantheon storyline will end in a big way in Warzone because they ended basically the Perseus storyline in Warzone and I think that they're going to end the Pantheon storyline in Warzone as well and we're probably going to kill that guy at the end of the game and we probably will get a conclusion to Troy Marshall and his team as well in the Warzone storyline so that's the best way that I can explain it hopefully I was able to tell you who that guy at the end was hopefully I was able to tell you that we're setting up something for Warzone and hopefully you were able to understand the ending a little bit more if I confuse you or you didn't understand comment down below and let's freaking talk down there and figure it out together because you know it was a little confusing but we're all trying to figure it out harrow may be gone but not the pantheon i need you back in avalon you think you're still a threat i do and worse whatever cabal brought harrow into the pantheon still lives inside our house we thought they were long gone but it turns out they never left.